Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Cameron Barbier, and I am the Associate Product Manager for Transitions here at Essilor. Uh, we're going to spend some time today talking about light management, uh, which all that really means is we're going to talk about um, light, the ways it manifests uh, in our world, and the way that uh, it impacts our patient's eyes and ultimately our patient's vision. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, in our industry, we tend to focus a lot on vision correction. However, when we speak about vision and when we, we talk about providing better vision to patients, we need to start going beyond just correction. There's this big, broad need to master or bring this light that our patients have to interact with on a daily basis totally under control. And what this, this need does is it gives us the opportunity to offer more than just correction to patients, but a holistic light management solution or a, 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 a series of solutions to patients. So light is all around us. Uh, it's a constant presence. It's dynamic, but most of us don't really notice how light is constantly changing. And our body needs light. It's essential to our health and the way that we feel. Uh, when we talk about light and vision, light, light is absolutely essential to vision, obviously. But the relationship between light and sight is not always a positive one. If you've worked in the industry for any amount of time, you know that, in, especially specifically Essel, where we spend a lot of time talking about protecting patients from UV, UVA, UVB, protecting patients from bad blue light. We talk about the negatives quite frequently, but there's also this whole other side of light where we talk about, we, you know, you need beneficial blue light to help maintain your circadian rhythm or, you know, lights play in uh, ocular development, which we'll get into a little more in a minute. Um, but right now, your patient's eyes, they're overstimulated by our modern lifestyles. Uh, they're exposed to more artificial lights, brighter lights, stronger lights, bigger lights every day. Um, this daily underexposure or overexposure to light has a very large impact on both our visual performance and our general health. And that's because light is a major factor in human development. I mean, it's essential, one, to healthy development. Uh, we know that the acquisition of visual function is experienced as early as infancy and is essential to a healthy development. In fact, there are many, many experiments that have demonstrated that ocular growth and refraction development are absolutely regulated by the, rece the reception of visual information, um, especially among kids. With less time outdoors, we're seeing an increased myopia. There's actually growing evidence that spending more time outdoors may lower the risk of nearsightedness in children and adolescents. Daily exposure impacts vision and general health. It, it, it's part of that circadian rhythm. It's part of those different biometrics. It really does impact your day-to-day -day performance making sure you get enough light. Now, when we survey our glasses wearers, when we survey our patients, virtually everyone tells us they experience light sensitivity. You know, when we ask, exactly nine out of 10 eyeglass wearers declare that they are light sensitive. But it's not something that they're all talking about. It's not something they're calling up the optometrist's office and saying, doctor, I need to schedule an appointment. I think I may be light sensitive. Um, and a lot of that is driven by the fact that our bodies just develop compensating behaviors. Uh, they try to cope using these behaviors by shading their eyes, by squinting, turning off the lights, or turning down the screen brightness on their phones. 84% uh, look away, 67% adjust the screen brightness, 90% just plain squint. Um, and that's not necessarily the way it has to be. 79% of our patients want to learn more about what they can do to mitigate this light sensitivity and be more comfortable. But 61% of them never really brought it up or would never think to bring it up. They want to hear from you and they want solutions, but they don't know how to start the conversation. So it's a conversation that has to start on our side of the table. Uh, it, it's something that, that we can guide them to the right solutions for them. And part of us guiding them to those solutions and part of us being that conversation starter has to come from a deep understanding on our end of light. And what we've been able to do through a lot of research and a lot of work is sort of boil it down into four understandable segments or the four dimensions of light, the four Ds. Uh, we use these four dimensions of light to better understand how our products can best address the light challenge for our patient's eyes 
and then how we can deliver the best products to meet patient needs. So we'll go ahead and get into it then. So the first dimension of light is the spectrum. Uh, parts of the spectrum can cause discomfort, but beyond just bothering patients, some, some parts of the light spectrum are actually very harmful in the long term. Unprotected UV and harmful blue light exposure can create eye damage and lead to irreversible pathologies. And it's the first thing that we need to address. So this is the electromagnetic spectrum. Now only a small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum at wavelengths between 380 and 780 nanometers provide what we call the visible light spectrum. That's what you see blown out in front of you here. Um, ultraviolet light actually is a little bit ahead of that. It's a little bit in front of it and it's divided into UVA and UVB. Uh, now we know exposure to UV is a well-established and major cause of a whole litany of, of eyelid and, and eye maladies. Uh, we, we don't need to, to delve into those too deeply. It's, it's a pretty well-known category, but the, the number one thing that comes to most people's minds is cataracts. UV's interaction with your eye causes cataracts. Now, just next to UV in the visible light spectrum from 415 to 455 is you'll get harmful blue light. Now, harmful blue light is unique because it's on the visible light spectrum, but it's still potentially dangerous to your eye. Due to this higher level than any other wavelength on the visible spectrum, blue light is potentially harmful to the retina. While UV transmittance is blocked primarily by the cornea and the crystalline lens in healthy adults, as part of visible light, blue light actually passes through your cornea and passes through your crystalline lens and makes itself all the way to the retina, which is what it should do. It's, it's, it's visible light. That's, that's how we perceive these colors. But because it's so close to UV on the spectrum, it actually is carrying enough energy and enough power and even in a single photon to generate a change in the cellular, cellular makeup of your retina. So it engenders a physiological change. Uh, despite physiological protections, prolonged exposure to harmful blue light can increase your probability for temporary issues like eye strain, but it's also been linked to an increased risk of developing age-related macular degeneration. Now, once again, it's important here for me to note that not necessarily all blue light is harmful, Anything past that 455 nanometer line is actually beneficial blue light and important for your sleep-wake cycle, which kind of brings me around to our harmful light sources. Now, blue light is almost exclusively associated with our patients with electronic devices and screens. Now, harmful blue light is actually present in both indoors and outdoors, but it's especially present outdoors. Harmful blue light can be emitted by LED lights, uh, fluorescent lamps, digital devices, but it's a hundred times more intense from what's being emitted is from the sun. So the, the sun is far and away the single largest source of harmful blue light, far none. So it's so important when we're addressing blue light protection that you're being protected both indoors and out. And it is at the forefront of our patients' minds. Uh, nearly one in four children spend more than three hours a day using digital devices. And nearly two in five millennials spend more than nine hours a day using digital devices. So while the human eye was meant to receive a portion of blue light, it may be possible that the increased exposure can have a more long-term impact on our eyes. And it's something that our patients are becoming more keenly aware of. Spending all this time in front of their screens, it's something that they are, at minimum, curious about. So new research is showing that knowledge of blue light is increasing slowly, and consumers know more about blue light compared to a year ago, but 41% admit that they know nothing at all about it. And they're going to see a general theme of this presentation of, of us on our side of the table and you with your patients needing to be the experts on these topics and needing to bring them up with your patients and educating them yourselves. Um, of educated consumers likely to purchase a product, 78% were more willing to purchase a, a, a lens protection product after being a little bit educated on blue light. So after a sample statement, or a simple statement explaining what blue light was, almost 80% of consumers said they're more likely to purchase a product. This number jumps to 85 if this person we're talking to is a millennial because it's something that they are particularly concerned with. 
So that rounds it out the first dimension of light was spectrum. Now the second dimension is intensity of light, and it's the most obvious dimensional light. Uh, the greater the brightness, the greater the discomfort. We're always looking at ways to address intensity of light in our product development, and that's why we really are so critical on not compromising our darkness outside when it comes to transitions. And our core products like Extractive and Signature for fadeback speed, because if it doesn't get all the way dark outside, we're not addressing the single most important need. So let's dive into intensity. So intensity leads ultimately to glare, right? And there are several different kinds of glare. The first time I'm gonna talk about it is distracting glare. Distracting glare results from light reflected off the surface. Uh, whenever the light moves from one optical medium to another, I, you know, for example, from air to glass, uh, some of that light gets reflected. Now, this results on reflection of the lens and can be distracting. It can represent an annoyance and can potentially lead to eye fatigue. The second type of glare we have is discomforting. Discomforting glare results from direct or reflected light. Uh, it very technically, it ranges from 3,000 lumens up to about 10,000 lumens, at which point past 10,000 lumens, it becomes what we call disabling glare which we'll get to there in a minute. Um, even mild degrees of discomforting glare can produce discomfort or fatigue. Go figure. Uh, the unprotected eye will respond to discomforting glare by squinting and, you know, all those different compensation behaviors we discussed earlier and constriction of the pupil. Uh, the affected individual will try to avoid the glare by shielding their eyes, turning their head in another direction, or really engaging in any number of those behaviors, unless they have a solution on their face, like transitions lenses that's going to react to the amount of light that they have in front of them and will provide that more comfortable tint. So next up is disabling glare. Now disabling glare is when a level of light is in excess of 10,000 lumens or more, producing a glare that is actually interfering or that actually can interfere with or block vision. Uh, this type of glare causes objects to have a lower contrast than there would be if there were no glare. So it begins to sort of wash out colors. Um, Ultimately, the best solutions for disabling glare, which tends to become more problematic specifically in the elderly, as your crystal in the lens begins to fog over a little bit or become less crystal clear, um, this kind of glare specifically becomes a big problem. Um, sunglasses are a great solution for this, or as we've talked about, photochromic lens like transitions is a great way to manage disabling glare. And then lastly, we have blinding glare. Now blinding glare, is the fourth type of glare, uh, and it results from a light reflecting off of a smooth or shiny surface like the road or water. I mean, blinding glare actually blocks vision to the extent where the wearer becomes visually compromised. Uh, in this case, the light is becoming polarized. So polarized sunglasses or photochromics with polarization like Transitions Vantage are going to be ideal in this scenario. Now, I know we've talked a lot about light and different glare and then the different amounts of intensity, but I want to take a moment, talk about night vision. Um, there's something interesting that happens with night vision when you're exposed to incredibly bright lights throughout the day. Is that studies have shown that two or three hour exposures uh, or exposures of up to two or three hours to sunlight will delay the initial phase of dark adaptation in the evening as much as 10 minutes. Um, the longer the exposure to sunlight, the longer the adaptation to normal dark vision. Uh, so after 10 daily exposures, the visual acuity and contrast shows a 50% elevated threshold. All that means in the long run is that by being exposed to this bright light outside, you're increasing the amount of time that your eyes need to recover and actually add, you know, adapt to that night vision. So. It's important to keep those eyes covered in the day so that your night vision can, you know, be acquired quicker. Uh, the third dimension of light of four is the source of light. The source of light refers to the size of the source as well as the position relative to the eye. So the smaller the source, uh, the greater the discomfort, and likewise, the closer the source, the greater the discomfort. So what I mean here, really and specifically, is we're talking about eye strain. A key consideration in the source of light dimension or the source of light dimension is digital eye strain. Glare from a digital screen can cause the eyes to work harder, leading to digital eye strain. Now there's also several other key factors that come into play here. Uh, one of the largest ones being how close the object is in your near vision. If you've got your eyes locked on a phone with eight inches from your face, 
your eyes are not built to look that way, right? They're, they're most comfortable looking 20 feet away. So when your ciliary eye muscles are contracted in that way and they're, they're holding that near vision locked, on top of being exposed to this kind of a typically blue light being emanated from a screen, uh, blue light is also unique insofar as it scatters the most when it gets into your eye. So your eye has to work pretty hard to concentrate on making the image clear. Um, so that's where your digital eye strain is coming from. Is it's, it's all of these different factors combined together. The symptoms of digital eye strain include dry eyes, headaches, blurred vision. Um, there's a lot of ways to alleviate digital eye strain. There are several products on the market today that allow for a small accommodative boost. Uh, if your patients don't have one of those, there's always something to lean on the 20-20-20 rule. Uh, every 20 minutes, look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. Um, but as I mentioned previously, you could also put them in a lens that would help protect them from these symptoms of visual fatigue or at least reduce them. Um, but when we're talking about sources of light that are small and very, very close, your phone and digital eye strainer are pretty hand in hand. And lastly, we have the fourth dimension of light, which is temporality. Uh, now this is the time element of light. So a light source may be present for a short or long period of time. And what this gets at is talking about flashing lights or long periods of intense, single brutal light are uncomfortable for your retinas because they're trying to adapt. So whether it's too much light for your eye to adapt to or these flashing lights uh, that are making your eye have to go back and forth between dark and light and trying to uh, accumulate or, or, or balance itself that way. So we have all these different dimensions of light, but what does it really mean for us in the long run, right? Well, it means that patients are ex having to deal with a lot throughout their day to day and having to deal with a lot of these different dimensions of light, but they don't necessarily have to do it without the aid of an optical solution. Uh, we've mentioned these solutions throughout the, the presentation, and we do have them. We have Transitions Signature Gen 8, uh, which is our latest Transitions lens, which represents a lens that's going to be the right lens in every light for most patients. It activates outside in 35 seconds and indoors. When you come inside, it'll be cleared up and it'll, it'll deactivate. Uh, the fadeback speed's less than five minutes, uh, which is, we've timed it around the office, is just right the amount of time to Go to your car, come back to your desk, or write an email, and then go to a meeting and have your lens be cleared up. Um, we also have transitions extra active for those patients who are incredibly sensitive to all these different dimensions of light that need that little extra hint of tint. We also have transitions vantage, which polarizes as it activates if there's a patient who needs something that does that. As we continue to make larger and larger leaps in technology in the optical industry, this dynamic light management is just it's going to need to become a standard, right? It's going to become the standard. So whether you're an eyeglass lens wearer or a contact lens wearer, there are products, there are things that are available to you um, and, and, and to your patients that, that can help them manage this light, especially given how great this new Gen 8 product is. Uh, truly, truly, I think it's going to be the photochromic that your patients have all been waiting for. Um, thank you so much. I appreciate your time today. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, if you have any questions, please email the uh, email that sent you the, the invite. Thank you so much. Bye.